Why would you walk the length of a country? That's what we did for five months. We walked Te Araroa, a walking trail all across New Zealand. From the most northern point, Gabrienga, all the way south to Bluff. Just over 3,000 kilometers. One step at a time. The trail is not just a trail. It's one big adventure. Mountains, farmland, bush, rivers, highways, mud, climbing, sunsets. It's all there. Sometimes it feels like there is no trail. Sometimes it's full of people. Sometimes you ask, why? Mostly you feel on top, out, out there, there, doing, doing it. it. And so it begins, our first days on the trail. 90 mile beach, 90 kilometers of beach walking, endless views of sand and sea, trying to find a rhythm. That's what long distance hiking is about, finding your rhythm. Because you walk every day, day after day after day. Wake up, have your breakfast, pack your bag, get going. Walk, have a break, walk more. Reach a hut or pick a spot to pitch your tent and enjoy the evening light. Or just go to bed early because all you want to do is sleep. Over time, it all falls into place. We are almost at the end of 90 Mile Beach. But we have almost 100 km. Wow! After 90 Mile Beach, we dive right into one of the most notorious sections of the whole trail. Ritea Forest. Mud, mud and mud. About 30 minutes in, we start to realize one kilometer an hour is a normal pace here. But at the same time, the beauty of the Nordland forests gets to us. Native wildlife and vegetation following a stream for hours. So many different kinds of green. Nature like we've never seen before. that make the trail. Those on trail, those in towns, and all the people off trail that keep you going. True trail angels. People that voluntarily support the trail. From little surprise gifts to opening up their homes for shelter. And then there's fellow hikers. Because sometimes you walk alone, but most of the time you walk together. For a day, a week. Some people stay. And some people stay for thousands of kilometers. And Katie and Georgia stayed till the end. As we leave the bush behind, we reach the east coast. Wide beaches and blue ocean views. River and estuary crossings. Living by the tides. Wet feet all day. Slowly making our way to Auckland. The further you get, the more you eat. The hiker hunger is real. Breakfast, coffee, second breakfast, fresh fruit, snacks, brunch, more snacks. Food is not just our favorite topic to talk about, but on trip. It's our go-to treat when in town. Craving more every day. And as you need your calories, we eat a lot. How have you gelopen today? 25 kilometers. And we moeten nog 10. After a while, walking every day starts to feel normal. The further we go south, the more we find our rhythm. But there's not just walking to be done. The trail comes by multiple water sections, including a multi-day paddle down the Wanganui River. A welcoming change after hiking over a thousand kilometers.
After all the bush, paddocks, rivers and estuaries, the mountains started calling. And that's what we get. Four days of rugged ridgelines overlooking the green valleys of the Tararua ranges. Long, hot days of climbing up and down and up and down. The first nights in the backcountry hut. Christmas morning sunrise. Fancy Christmas dinner. Yes, we carried all that to the hut ourselves. Als een meegetilde fles rode wijn. By finishing the Tararua ranges, we make our way to Wellington, the end of the North Island. After a few days off, we start to feel it. We feel ready. Ready for the second half of the hike. Ready for more. Ready for the South Island. The South Island is the trail's hot topic for a reason. It's mostly mountains. The trail is far from civilization. It's higher, hotter, harder. It's slow going. It is wild. After an easy start on the scenic Queen Charlotte track, we make our way to the Richmond Ranges, the most rugged and technical part of the trail. Slightly scary, but mostly exciting, not knowing what's to come. Ready for a long nine day haul with 17 kilos of food in our packs. Ready for whatever. We slowly find our way up through bush lines and fields of stones. And as soon as you reach a mountain top, it feels like, finally, the views, the power, the humbleness. You feel great, you feel small. You feel free. It went well. Yeah, it's true. Steady to the top. I feel like now and it's 10 o'clock in the morning. I would lie if I said it wasn't hard. It was fucking hard. Cold mornings, putting on your wet shoes and socks, motivate yourself to walk up another mountain or cross a big river. But whatever comes your way, you simply do it, even though you think you can. It's surprising what your body can do. It is the mind that determines how far you go. You are your own limit. Watching beautiful sunrises, having lunch on top of mountains, swimming in the clearest water, enjoying whatever the day throws at you. Cold? And as we make our way up to the highest point of the trail, it all comes together. Embracing the struggle, the beauty of the people we are surrounded with every single day, the richness of our simple life. We pitch our tent 1925 meters up in the sky, tucking into our sleeping bags while outside it's cold and windy. No view at all. We're literally in the clouds. But the next morning, it clears right before sunrise. We are above the clouds, feeling on top of the roof. And then, as we cross the 2700 kilometer mark, we start to feel it. We are going to make it. But the feeling of accomplishment is followed by the realization that it's all coming to an end. It's almost over. This life is almost over. 
But first we have to walk another 300 kilometers. And of course, the end never comes easy. We spend the last days of our adventure in rain gear, knee deep mud and on windy beaches. It's those moments that you realize how small we are, but how blessed we are to be alive. To explore the world. To be healthy. To walk country. And to have each other. And do this together. together. Why would you walk the length 